Hey. Yeah. Hey everybody, William Wallace here, and today I'm sitting down with Senator Beth Mizell up here in Franklinton, Louisiana, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that's going on in her district so everybody can get to know about things that are happening here. And as always, I'm looking for solutions for our state, but I also want to promote community, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Senator Beth Mizell, how are you doing today? I'm great, William. Thank you for having me here. Thanks. Thank you for coming to Franklinton, Louisiana. Appreciate that. I appreciate the invite. Beautiful drive. I love it. <laughs> I think so. It's it, People are really surprised. Many people have said, wait, what state am I in now? Yeah. Because it's a, it's a beautiful drive out here. So so thanks for the opportunity. It's almost it's almost like, you know, when I, when my, my wife said about driving an hour. She had to drive an hour or so. I said, yeah, but... By the time I get up there, I'll be really relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's therapy. It can it, be therapy. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, speaking of that drive, though, where does your district, um, you know, uh, My cover? district is, is uh, mostly, just like you saw, it's very much rolling hills, rural area. Uh, it encompasses all of Washington Parish. It, it is the um, northern part of St. Tammany. And it's the uh, east to west of Tangipahoa. So it goes from Kentwood down to Hammond yeah. in Tangi. And then in St. Tammany, it goes from Folsom all the way up to Sun and then goes into Washington. It's very much, uh, it's rural, no matter what parish it is, is that you're in, in my district, it's mostly rural. Um, a lot of the concerns are the same. Uh, a, a, a lot of that. The uh, assets are all across the district, pretty much it, the strengths and the weaknesses are all pretty much the same. Uh, my schools in the district go from A's to F's. We have great roads, we have really bad roads. Right. The one constant throughout the district is that we need broadband. Oh, really? We need broadband. You don't have it up here? No. You would think, I mean, like, see, that, that that's an no. issue that it's people would even issue. think about, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I guess we take it for granted down, you know, we're in the city part of the area. Right. You, yeah. See, you, you city folk have the, <laughs> you, you city folk have the luxury of taking it for granted. Yeah. Here, you know, I have people who call the office all the time saying, I can't stay connected. I, you know, I lost my connectivity. I, you know, I have a satellite. I have uh, it, something that it, we're still back in 1995. Right. And it, it's frustrating because... Um, you know, our young people want to do online courses. Right. You know, we we uh, also have a lot of poverty in my district in the rural areas. And uh, in, if they're going to have television, they're paying high price of direct TV or dish. Right. Because they can't stream. They, you know, they can't do the Netflix. They can't right. do the options that you all can take for granted. So that's, that, this, it's a hardship. So that's one of the things you think in your district is probably the most... Uh, the most pressing. I, I think I'll it's say. an across the board problem that uh, rural area, rural area, that moves your rural areas. Right, and so it's a statewide problem. Yeah, it's a statewide problem. So, but I feel it uh, keenly in my district because you know we're you know it's mostly rural. Lafayette had something a while back where they added a, right. you know, free internet or whatever it was for the right. for the for the town. Uh, I think there's been a lot of questions about that, but but uh, yeah, Lafayette did it. They did fiber optic, and, yeah. and and really to have actual broadband, you have to have the physical installation. You know, yeah. it, it's that's what it requires. So, you know, I've got a task force right now that is looking at how do you overcome each obstacle. Uh, very often, and you and I have a lot to talk about, but. I find that, you know, we have obstacles in our head that are not reality. Right. So the, the task force has every every stakeholder uh, in every area affected uh, within um, the structure of broadband for the state of Louisiana sitting down so that we can see, is this a true obstacle? How do we, how do we overcome this? And then we can move to the next one. So um, I'm, I'm really optimistic that we're going to have some solutions yeah. that overcome the obstacles, whether they're actual obstacles or just perception. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And the good thing about having other communities in the, in the state that have done different things that I brought up Lafayette mm -hmm. is that you can look at other areas and find out what works and what doesn't work. Right. And so that way, when you find right. the solution in here, you're, you're able to kind of find the perfect solution for your community is. Exactly. And, you know, in Mississippi, which, you know, I, I, 
when I was campaigning, I, I, I hated to use Mississippi as a yeah. positive example right. because we, you know, we we never aspired to be Mississippi. We, yeah. you know, but actually, Mississippi has now um, just passed legislation that the electric co-ops are part of the solution for broadband, and they're working hand in glove with with the broadband uh, installation and the, the grantees to, to bring broadband into Mississippi, the rural areas. So that uh, that's something we all need to look at closely. Do they have a public service commission that would that, that, that help in that? Or? I, I don't know what they call their, that's a good question. I don't know what they call their entity. I know that they- Here we have the public service commission. Right, right. But, but our public service commission doesn't have a ruling that would limit uh, the use of co-ops for mm -hmm. broadband. That came up in the task force. Oh wow! So that because that was a perception yeah. that there was something that would would block it. There's there's no such ruling is what is what we were told in the task force. So it's not just your area. There's other the all over areas state, all over you know, the country. Right. So this is you know it's funny because one of the questions I was have for you today mm -hmm. is what are some of the good what so what are some things that you see as being you mm -hmm. know most needed in our state to find solutions. Right. Right. You know, stuff like that, like even just helping online courses, right. you know, having, you know, young people be able to have access to, you know, we don't think of it as a necessity as much as it is a necessity right. because when you've got students that want to learn, you know, this is an opportunity to help educate our state. I, I can give you an example of just a, a, a small uh, uh, incident that you all take for granted in, in, in uh, the Wi-Fi world that you have. A city uh, folks. A city, city folks. <laughs> Um, I, I had a young girl at a, uh, I was giving a talk at a church and a little nine year old girl at the end of the, uh, at the end of the talk had a question and I said, what is it, honey? And she said, uh, you're the Senator. Can you make my math easier? And I said, <laughs> no, I cannot make your math easier, but you could go to Khan Academy and get tutoring yeah. and help you with the math. Right. No, ma'am. I don't have internet at home. So it's one wow. of those one of those little yeah. things that you know you you have the lecture taken yeah. for granted. Well, she doesn't have that benefit. So it, it so you know there's a, a struggle that shouldn't be so right. for our children to, uh, to have access to what uh, most of the rest of the state already has. Yeah, so people are really surprised we don't have broadband. That helps out. Is it helps out a whole lot when you can when you can people can rely on you know on right. on, you know on, on it's that. there. You know it's there. Yeah. So, so you think that's the most pressing thing in your, in your district, or is there something else in your district that might be as pressing or more pressing that you're trying to accomplish in maybe the next legislative session? There, there's a, a lot, of, a lot of issues. I mean, I think uh, in each parish, uh, if you talk to the parish leadership, they probably have a different set of issues that they see as concerns. Uh, personally, broadband is one part of the quality of life that. I, that's what I feel strongest about. Yeah. Is that uh, uh, the rural people? We we you know we have a, a difficult time finding a job opportunity. Yeah. You have a difficult time. Sometimes you're having to commute to get to a right. job. You know we we have uh, uh, very few options with childcare. You know so the early right. childhood options there and, and there's there's layers uh, of difficulties that affect the quality of life and why people don't choose to live in a beautiful district like right. this. So, you know, the more we can improve the quality of life, whether it's strengthen our educational options, whether it's uh, a, a better roads that give access, right. uh, the broadband, it, it all, we, you know, we have some great healthcare options now as far as the rural hospital. Uh, we have North Oaks, we have Hood, we have the hospital in Bogalusa and here in Franklinton. So we've got, you know, there, there are options that are improving every day right. on that. But it, it's uh, making it where we could be a home rather than just a, a place people commute from. That, that, right. Yeah, that, that, that's, yeah that, that's, a, that's a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. A home instead of, instead of just a commuter place. Right. We people want, their, their weekend homes. Or right, right, right. We, we want them to be able to shop here. We want the children to go to school here. We want to have recreational right. options here. So. We're going to talk about recreation in a minute. I want to talk yeah. about. I want to talk about things that people would, would you know, think about Franklinton, where they get yeah. about coming to up here. Because I kind of research a little bit. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of neat little things to yeah. do up here. Yeah. You know, like uh, I'm in it was in Harahan the other night, 
you know, and somebody mm -hmm. says, oh, my my brother's steakhouse is Bo's Steakhouse. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And, and I said, Bo's Steakhouse? She goes, yeah, it's one of the best, one of the best places up there to eat yeah, up there. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, and she's always... Straight down the highway. She's always, well, they, they, they even said, Straight when you speak to the senator, yeah. you, <laughs> we all know Bo's Steakhouse. <laughs> you know? Goes, well, the senator, yeah. have you seen my salary? I can't afford steak. Well, no, no. <laughs> well, they just said you know that. I do, I do know. I do they know. They didn't say you go to the yeah, restaurant. Yeah, they just yeah, said yeah, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> It is. It's a. It's a very well known place. Very so, well thought of. So, in reflecting on the last legislative session, uh -huh. is there anything that was a project of yours, or something that you want to bring mm -hmm. up this next session? Is there is there something that is it is it is it the broadband, or am I repeating? Have you asked to repeat, or is it is there something else that you want to reflect on that you want to help work on for this next session? I, I, I think uh, what I was really proud of, which it, it took some uh, perseverance. Uh, last time, uh, last session, uh, I had a bill that I brought up initially four years ago. Yeah. And that bill was to uh, repeal a reservoir commission that was in Washington Parish. Mm -hmm. But it it was like the poster child of bad Louisiana politics. Okay. Okay. And I, and I say that. Uh, with all due to respect yeah. for all the things that yeah. have happened in Louisiana. There's no bad ideas or bad things to talk about. There's just things that sometimes when you put something on the right. table, right. you might not agree with it. Somebody says, I, I want that. But when you put it on the table and talk about it, sometimes it just finds a, another solution can come out. Right, exactly. Because what had happened, uh, I believe it was 14 years ago, this Reservoir Commission was put in place. Uh, it, it, it was given, uh, I believe, two point eight million, if I remember the number, and uh, in fourteen years, we have never even been uh, permitted. The application process has never been completed, but we've spent two million dollars on it. Wow! And you, I mean, you when you talk to me about my goals for this district and. And the needs in this district to have spent two million dollars on uh, what I'm going to get at the end of the day is like three boxes of paper on uh, just paper that's been rules moved, and regulations, rules, regulation and forms that have not been completed, applications that have not gone through the full process, and and but in the midst of that, and this was Louisiana taxpayer money that was used for the two million, right. In the midst of that, you had people who lived on what would have been the footprint of that reservoir with no confidence that their homes would not be underwater in their lifetime. So it was, uh, to me, it was sad on so many levels because you were spending state taxpayer money without any reward to the taxpayer. Right. And at the same time, you were causing just emotional grief on the people right. whose homes were in that footprint. They couldn't sell it. Right. They couldn't sell their property because people knew, well, aren't you where the, the reservoir may be? Right. So uh, my whole point was four years ago to try to repeal that. Um, that didn't happen. You know, the people who had said they were going to support um, the idea kind of, uh, I hate to use the word crawfishing when we're talking yeah. about reservoirs, yeah. <laughs> but that's what happened. Uh, but this time, you know, we, we had had an audit. I'd ask uh, uh, for an audit of the Reservoir Commission's funds and could see um, the, the likelihood of, of, of what was going to happen. And the audit uh, was pretty absolutely, uh, they, they were not on either side, absolutely a neutral audit saying, that it, there was really no there there was no path forward on that reservoir, and so at that point yeah. they pulled out of it. And this year I was able to, to repeal it. But this is the this is the big swing and the positive. Yeah. Uh, so that's done. They've spent two million. I hate yeah. it, but they had uh, seven hundred thousand plus left yeah. from the money they initially had. And the way my bill was worded, um, that money is designated to expanding. Bochita State Park. Oh, wow, nice. And we're going to be having a town hall meeting where um, uh, citizens, uh, park officials, uh, I'm hoping uh, Billy Nungesser will be here, 
everybody can brainstorm ideas on what would that expansion look like to you. Bring, let, me, let me know and I'll come up okay, here again. Okay, I'd love to do that because we're all going to sit down and say, okay, this is what I think is the best use of the money. Yeah. But, you know, it's 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 perfectly making a silk purse out right. of a sow's ear. We're, we're going to absolutely take that negative and make a positive right. out of it. So I'm really excited about that. And, uh, and, and in the meantime, the people don't have to worry about their property being underwater. Right. water. So it's, it was, uh, it so was, the people that benefited that, less tax dollars right. spent and, and the money's going to be spent is going to be park. improving the park. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's been, that was probably, uh, you know, people saw it as a Washington parish thing. Yeah. I didn't see it as a Washington parish thing because to me it was a, acknowledging Poor use of taxpayer money, right? And stopping stopping that in its tracks. So, uh, and, and then turning it into something positive. So I, that that was probably something. I you know there were other bills, but that one that one is was hit home. Yeah, it really hit home. Yeah. And that's that's one they've always noticed about you and a watch. Uh, you know, on, you know when I watch from afar, hear about yeah. things that you're doing. Is you're a fiscal fiscally conservative. Yeah, Hawk, we don't have know. much money. No, we, you, you've got you know you've got to decide where you know what's going to have the biggest bang for the buck. Yeah, and, and too few people benefit from something like that. Right. I mean, if there were a reservoir, that would have been different. Yeah, exactly. No There's just not. Yeah. And then and we're at a time when our state is struggling, struggling and 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 trying to get back, and everyone's body's pointing fingers on who's right. spent more money, who's right. not spent money. You know, this is a this is something you can say. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's straight. You know, this is traceable back to straight, saving straight money forward. and some and, 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 and some and some good things. So, in the next mm -hmm. legislative session, what do you think? What do you think? What do you see as, you know, being something you would hit in the next legislature? Or, really? or, or you or you or you can you can you let us in on that? I, I think uh, you know I I uh, I, I told my uh, friends who are candidates for governor that the possibilities can keep you up at night. I mean, the possibilities yeah. of what we could do to bring this state out from the bottom of every list. Right. Uh, you know, and when I was campaigning, I would tell people all the time, my, my son's in Texas, my daughter's in Mississippi. Yeah. Everybody I talk to, I'm on the flight coming back from seeing my grandchildren in Texas. I'm sitting next to a woman from Laplace who had been going to do the same thing. Right. And that's, it breaks my heart. It does. It breaks my heart. And But we, you can't just wish it to be right. so. Right. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of excitement about um, the, the budget reform and the Constitutional Convention. I, I, to me, it goes back to taking that reform and creating an atmosphere of transparency, and right. trust in the government, right. and in an environment that respects the quality of life and yeah. getting jobs here. So it, it, there's, a, there's layers and layers. Yeah. You can't do it all at one time. I, I know the... Um, uh, when I was campaigning and, and we, I talked to uh, uh, to folks at meetings, you want to get them excited? You talk about reforming the the law, the car insurance pricing. Oh yeah, exactly. You right. Want it, because that affects everybody. If I if I could share one little yeah, thing, absolutely. Yeah. I I went to a ribbon cutting and I, I thought you know you you can talk about um, the number of billboards and and the the lawsuit environment. You can talk about what prices are in other states. Right. But the the clearest example of how our citizens are punished with that to me was um, at a ribbon cutting for an insurance agency. And I asked the fellow who it, it was a chain and I said, so when you when you're here in Louisiana, what do you see as the difference in a car insurance customer from Mississippi or Alabama? Right. And immediately the guy says in Mississippi or Alabama, they write the check, they walk out, they're done. In Louisiana, they have to put it on a time payment plan. They pay a monthly payment. Right. They're not able to write that wow. check yeah, exactly. because it's it's just too it's, too it's much, too yeah. absorbent at a price. So that is what we're doing to people. That's a unique way of putting it. Yeah. It, it. I mean, well, and that's why you can't afford. Maybe you maybe you can't afford. Uh, uh, music classes for your child. You can't right. afford the instruction or those extra things because you're saddled with that monthly right. car insurance that's tying you down. And and that's uh, that's something we've got to look at and do whatever is going to have to uh, be done to fix it. Yeah. And, and you can talk to 
10 people, you're going to get 10 reasons right. on why it is the way it is. But whatever it is has got to be fixed. That's kind of one of the reasons why I'm mm -hmm. doing these, these videos mm -hmm. is because when you talk to so many people, you get the divided, mm -hmm. you get the united, and you get yeah. all these different yeah. opinions. And quite honestly, yeah. I think that it comes down to there's going to be a lot of different ways and you got to bring more people to the table. Right. You know, it's it's everybody, you know, people want to attack one group, they want to attack another group, right, right. you know, they're all pointing fingers, but the reality is when you have conversations like this and you bring people, more people together, you're going to find the solutions. Because it's, you know? it's going to be, it's not going to be one, one answer. Right. There's multiple answers and only by, and, and I really would love to have a, you know, we've got such a majority in the Senate. Right, uh, and we super majority at this point, and you know, and in the house, I, it's going to be very near that. I, we cannot waste the opportunity. Right, we cannot, and I don't mean to um, create a tyranny. You know, yeah. I, I mean to use it as a conversation. Right, that should have positive outcomes. That exactly. is felt statewide, not just to Republicans, right. not just to conservatives, but everybody in the state should yeah. feel the positives from it. And, and what I would love to see would be something in the form of a contract with Louisiana where this is these are our goals and right. this is what we want to do. But well, you are bringing and, some, some old old terms. Right, 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 right. I but, like that, I like that. Do you remember how that worked? I do, I do. Because otherwise we're just throwing things against the wall and trying to see. But if we can say we're coming together to do this for the citizens of yeah. Louisiana, we've waited too long. You and I, you and I were talking before. There, there, there's just facets of life that we've made harder on our citizens, and we're losing them. Right. We've lost almost seventy thousand citizens exactly. to go exactly. to other places. And if we don't acknowledge that Louisiana is more than gumbo and having a good time, right. we're never going to get them back. Exactly. So that's that's. I'm excited about that. Now I forgot what your question was. Well, no. <laughs> it's okay. I'm excited. It, it, this is more about about, about talking right. about solutions and, and yes. finding things, and you know, than the, the exact question. Yeah. But that's one of the good things that that, that I, I came to you because I've always seen you as somebody who is not. You know, you, you have your ideologies, and here's what I like to say: we can all have our ideologies. Right. We can all lean to one direction. We can all be a member of a party, but if we don't start coming together. On solutions, on ideas right. from everybody. It doesn't matter whether you what's your ideology. If we don't start bringing ideas together, right. the only people that lose are our citizens. For the and, and it's got to be for the good of yeah. all. And we can't. Uh, I, I just had read this book about the power of habit. It's a great book. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the lines, and it goes into truces. How we make these truces. And I, and I see that at so much of the capital that will will push this idea and we know we want to see this outcome. And then all of a sudden, oh wait, that's going to step on this person's toes. I'm going yeah. to back off. And and the answer doesn't come about. I need to get some water. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. No problem. Do you want do you want some water? No, I'm good. I'm good. Well, <coughs> just really, I got. While we're taking while 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 we're getting uh, some water here. Um, I'll let everybody know one of the, again one of the reasons why I'm doing this video and one of the reasons I'm doing these interviews is to be able to find not only solutions for our state but find things that we can all come together on find things that you know we can all have our ideologies but we live in a time where if our ideologies are going to divide us more than they unite us you know we got to go back to a time where we can find things find th you know, the things that we can agree on even if it's one small thing, even if it's, you know, let's just uh, talk a little bit while we get the water, you know, is that one of the problems that we have is that people want to stand on their <coughs> ideologies instead of trying to find the solutions. And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and too often in our, in our state, too, they, get, they create these big, gigantic bills that are so, so jam-packed with ideologies on both sides that right. they don't make it through. It becomes a stalemate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When when the, it, it might be as simple as finding one small thing that we can agree on and, and make a bill on just that one mm -hmm. small thing mm -hmm. and take a baby step instead of trying to catch, right. you know, the king mackerel fish, you know. Well, we just, you but know, that's, you know, we, we ignore the good while we look for the perfect. And uh, the uh, perfect yeah. may never be there. Right. I, I know when we had the omnibus bill in... Uh, 
Senate Jude A last year, one of the trial lawyers on the committee that voted it down said that the bill just wasn't good enough. It just wasn't good enough that we, we should have a better bill to fix the, the, uh, uh, the insurance problem in Louisiana. But we, let, let's go at least in some yeah. positive direction so we do nothing. Because yeah. we're, we're waiting for that perfection. So it's, and, it's, our, op it's our opening doors right. for people, like even like the trial attorneys, to say, okay, well, let's, let's bring your ideas. Let's find what we have in common right, and just right. create a bill just for that. So Even if it's something small, it's a baby step in the right direction right, right. instead of the and stalemate. If, and if that's not what you want, then, then show us because yeah. so much of it is... Uh, uh, it, it becomes a them and us. Yeah. We're very much into them and us and uh, to try to get you know them and us into some agreement so that our citizens aren't continually shortchanged right. because of exactly. that. Exactly. That's a huge step forward. Well, let's, let, let's talk about your citizens and constituents <laughs> and stuff like that. Sorry. You know, that's okay. Well, let's, let's, well, let's go back to your district. You know, mm -hmm. what are, like, when you talk about things that, you know, that people can unite on, what are some things in your district here that somebody outside this district might want to come here and see? People in your district can unite on. Are there some places you know that you want to share with people? Because ultimately, we want to have people enjoy yes. this great area that you live yes, in. Yes, you're right. I, I can tell you something that people come from all over the state to see, and that's Southeastern University. Really. It's, uh, I mean, Southeastern, I don't know if you've ever been through it. It's a beautiful yeah. university that pulls students from all over the state. Uh, they, they just started an ROTC program. They're bringing it back. They're going to have a stronger, better. They're going to have a, an optical course. I'm sure they call it something different. But yeah, they, <laughs> right, right. That's what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and so it, it, it's a very proud uh, school of, uh, and, and for good reason. So, yeah. so that draws a lot of young people into Hammond yeah. who stay. Right. I mean, I, how many people I've met who met their their uh, marriage partner yeah, right. at Hammond exactly. uh, while they were in Southeast. It's, it's, so, it's Southeast is one of those little gems of our state that is. we forget about. It, it is. It's it beautiful. Serves, it serves a great, and, it serves and, a great and, community. And they've done, you know, as I tell Dr. Crane, he uh, he's done so many things right that uh, you know a lot of the other schools could could model right. after them, uh, but but that you know that's in Hammond, throughout uh, Tangipahoa and yeah. Saint Tammany. You have the Rolling Hills. Uh, uh, Saint Tammany's well known for that in my area for the horse farms and the oh, beauty yeah. of that. Uh, it's it's a great place to raise a family. I mean uh, the opportunities for uh, students in school right. and and. and a livelihood is wonderful. Here in Washington Parish, probably uh, what I would recommend would be a visit to Bochetta State Park. Okay. It it covers um, every every geographical phenomenon in the state of Louisiana. Really? You have a swamp area, you have bluffs, you have a river, you have uh, you know climbing trails. So yeah. it's, it's like a, a condensed version of, of everything you oh, can wow. find in the, in the state of Louisiana. So that's beautiful, but but we have a huge fair in Franklin. To oh, that's here. right, yeah. I think over the four days the fair covers, we have over a hundred thousand people. Wow! It is it's the largest free fair in the country. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. It's not you know it's not just a carnival in right. midway. It it's a beautiful uh, area that that uh, there's a lot of pride. It, it has a very a lot of pride attached. It has a very um, I I don't want to say old feel. Yes. You know, but it has a very, you know, like you're country, stepping back, you're like stepping you're stepping back, back in time, time feel. Right, I, I've right. been, yeah, I've been to it a couple there, times. There's an area in there called Mile Branch that uh, I think we yeah. talked about it where they had, you, it's like a village that's yeah. been picked I've up and that, yeah. moved there, but it was done separately. It wasn't done right. uh, it, it's one community. It's beautiful. There's a lot of pride to that. Yeah. I mean, the paper mill in Bugaloose has been there over a hundred years. Wow. So there is a... Uh, a, a pride of, of place yeah. here that uh, Bogalusa was called the Magic City. Yeah. And because it it came up overnight because of the sawmill. Yeah. And uh, there there's a, a beautiful community. It, it, it you know it's got the architecture from the the turn of the 20th century that is unlike any place I've ever seen.
See, these are all things yeah. that not many people yeah. realize that you yeah. get, uh, you know, I hate to break the term one tank trip, you <laughs> yeah, know, that's a good one. but I mean, yeah. you know, you come up here, you uh -huh. see all this stuff, I guess there's you know, some good restaurants, I've, I've had some good there, stuff There's here. There's uh, restaurants scattered all through, you already mentioned those, yeah, both but they're, steakhouse, all, yeah. they're, all, they're all scattered throughout, but there's uh, very strong family ties, uh, lots of possibilities, we're the natural uh, spillover the rural part going from St. Tammany into, into Washington yeah. or into Tangy is the natural spillover from the urban sprawl of the of the north you know from uh, yeah. the south shore to the north shore to this right. way so uh, you know uh, there's a lot of talk I'd love to see a third lane put on highway yeah. uh, 25 and coming in and going out 16 there's a lot of traffic on so the, the possibilities are there, and, and you know, I keep going back to this, it's creating the quality of life where yeah. people have confidence that their children are getting the education they right. should get, and that they trust the government that's in charge of their parish and their municipalities. Yeah, we live in a time where you need that connection, right? You know, to right. get to get out, right. to get out in the you know out of this area. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you right. think about the, about the families that here that can't make it to southeastern, right? You know, that maybe just have that extra broadband to be able to. Maybe they can't get to southeastern five days a week, but if they get there one day a week and be able to do an online class, of course, I'm brainstorming out loud. But just the general idea well, and, of what it does to connect people. And then, and the same thing with North Shore. I mean, North yeah. Shore Community College has uh, possibilities in high schools where they can give the dual enrollment. You have kids who can take welding, or I know in Hammond High School they do culinary arts. Yeah. They have uh, they have CNA programs. So it's the possibilities are there. We've just got to make sure it's accessible to all the kids, not yeah. just kids who happen to be fortunate enough to live in that one area. Right. And, and give everybody an equal chance. I think that's all, at the end of the day, right. we just want to have opportunities for our kids and to give them an equal chance here. They right. don't have to go out of state to find that equal chance. Sounds like you're yeah. fighting for that. Yes. I, I, I love it, that. It means, a, it means a lot because, you know, we, I, I love, it, it breaks my heart because we, uh, we've lost a lot of our population. We, you know, we have an opioid issue. We, we have uh, unemployment issues. We, there's a, you know, we've lost our dairy farms. There, and, and there's got to be opportunities that would substitute for those, uh, those downsides. Yes. Well, I, don't, I, don't about the, I saw the nurseries coming up. I don't know how much, right. you know, there's a right. ton of nurseries there's up here. There's a lot of nurseries and, and they're all over because you know, you have the land yeah. You know, there there's a, a lot of possibilities we're looking at. Um, right now, LSU Ag, I don't know, Highway 16, is bringing in solar panels. Oh, wow. And that's got mixed reviews. But it's, you know, it's a use of right. the land yeah. that, that wasn't being done before. Well, so, so we're trying to, to, to work through that. Well, that's one of the reasons why I come mm -hmm. talking to you mm -hmm. so much. Senator, because every time I, I hear about the good things that you're doing, you know, up here, I go, this is a great example of somebody who cares about your community. You know, you're fiscally conserved, you're trying to save tax dollars, but at the same time, you're looking for the right programs and the right mix yeah, yeah, to I'm, help the people in your district. And that's, there's, that's something to say about that. You, you're making me tired. But <laughs> <laughs> well, Cause, cause well, there is, there, the, I mean, you, you feel that, that you have four more years just, now. <laughs> yes, I do. You feel that the answers are right there. Yeah. And, and they, they've got to be within our grasp because we don't have four more years. I, I mean, we can't keep losing people right. at the rate we're losing people. We can't keep saying we got we, four no, more years. We've got, we've we've got to work like we don't have any time right. and hope that in four years we've made a difference. People yeah. have lost their patience. Right. And, you know, when I was campaigning, I, I would tell people, people are not mad enough. Yeah. They should be madder right. that our kids have moved away. That you know, there should be just more upset of it. And I, and my fear is that through much of the state, we've just gotten so used to being beat down yeah. that we don't realize we should ask for more. That we we're you. Oh well, Louisiana's at the bottom of that list. Right. Uh, okay. Oh one yeah. More, so one more time. Yeah. And and we've just gotten so used to it that we we don't get as upset or as angry as we should. And not that there should be an uprising, but. Right. The only way, and you and I were talking about this, the only way we're going to accomplish what we have the, uh, the possibilities to accomplish yeah. is by the public 
holding us accountable. Right. The public cannot say, yeah, go there and just, right. just do a little bit. No. Yeah. We're not going to say a little Do all you can. Bit. Do all you can. Let us, let us feel the wind. Yeah. Of what you all are doing in Baton right. Rouge. And, and that's what I'm hoping to see when we go this year. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, is because... You have I, a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you are. Yeah. yeah. I really am. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, well, yeah. It's, it's been my, my passion. Right. It's like, uh, this is how you're getting your passion right. out. This is how I'm getting my passion yeah. out. Because yeah. I want to start bringing, like, you know, people, you know, who don't know you don't hear about these great ideas. Yeah. So by me getting out and about and doing this, I want everybody to hear the great ideas that some of our elected officials have, mm -hmm. some of the things they're doing, like what you're doing, uh -huh. you know, and be able to uh, to help make a, a change in our state so we don't keep losing our children. So our children aren't going, aren't leaving the state. We're bringing opportunity here so they can stay here and do this. And uh, well, well, I thank you very much for well, your time. Well, I, I enjoyed it. And the last time I saw you, I'm going to put a, a shameless plug in, oh. into this. When I saw you, it was over the wall. We had yeah, been at Nam Wall exactly. last year. And if, if I may, yeah, I, I just want to kind of give you how that evolution's taken place. We had uh, left over from the wall effort uh, just about $6,000. Nice. And we'd said any funds left over would go to help veterans. Right. And we weren't quite sure what that would look like. Right. A young veteran came in my office and said, you know, there's no uh, veterans memorial in the parish. There's a small old one in front of the courthouse and there's one separated in Bogalusa. But there's nothing that would be a parish considered a parish. Right. And uh, there's an area uh, where there's a forest operated by LSU. Right. Between, I mean, smack central between Bogalusa and Franklin Center yeah. that looks like just a park. Right. And I asked a, a, a fellow with LSU what it would take to lease that separate lease. Yes. 3.8 acres, and it's shaped like a teardrop, which I thought was incredible. Yeah. But it's uh, so LSU has agreed, and they're letting us uh, lease it, hopefully for 99 years, as a Veterans Memorial Park. Right. And so the, the 6000 that was left from the wall will then be used to jumpstart that park. Yeah. So, you know, it's Yeah, like, we interview, interview you and your yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, right. You, we, you, that's when you and I talked about it. We were at the fairgrounds right. and it was like a... And the wall, the wall stirred emotions in so many people and had such an impact. It, it, was, a, yeah. it was an amazing visit when it was here. I'm going to have to air that video again that we did. It, it yeah. was, and, and it, you know what, it, it really instilled so much pride yeah. in, in uh, the wall being here. People, yeah. people, you know, wanted to make sure everything was done just right, the grass cut, everything. Yeah. And I, I think that... Uh, they rise to the occasion, you know. They, I they saw their eyes. We, we actually met in this room. Yeah, right. Okay, we met in this okay. room, and, and there are veterans. There are people that want oh, to see. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you came. And, and, and we had, and, right. and I saw it in everybody's eyes. Yeah. And that's why we, we I promoted it, it, was, on, the, it on was, the radio show down there. And, it yeah. was incredible. And uh, so anyway, so that's where it's gone. And you know, so the idea is that now the community can engage. You know, we'll have a. Uh, a park designer with uh, cultural recreation tourism has offered right. to lay out a, a plan and and based on donations and uh, grant and uh, people's generosity we can put that plan in place and have a veterans memorial park right amazing there. yeah it's pretty awesome i, I want to be there for the opening yeah yeah you'll have to. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty awesome especially you know with veterans uh, day is next week so okay uh, uh, I'd love to. They make uh, an announcement for it. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm meeting with somebody today right. to, to confirm all that. But but LSU has given us the go ahead, which yeah. is great, great, because it was it's it it feels spiritual. It, 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 it was meant to be. It really does. It's it's just a beautiful spot. So I'm really excited about. It. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, well, I really appreciate, I appreciate it. it. No, no, I, 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 I want everybody to get a chance to meet you. And, and uh, everybody, if you ever come to Franklinton, you can look up at Mizell's office, you know, reach out to the office, reach out to the community. There's lots of things to do up here, as you've heard yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could go out to lunch. We will do something. Yeah. I would have to yeah. do that then. And look, everybody, thank you very much for staying in touch. And thank you very much for watching the video and uh, listening to us on the podcast. And uh, share the video. Share us. 
because we're going to be looking for some positive solutions for our community and our state, things that will make our place better. Everybody stay in tune. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, William. Enjoyed that.